Hi guys and welcome to the True Golf Academy. My name is John Watts and you've joined me at Drayton Park Golf Club today in my swing studio and I thought I'd take advantage of the fact the weather's pretty grotty outside and coming into my studio onto my Huxley putting green and filming a, a putting video. Now this is a great uh, video and a good couple of exercises if you are a player where you tend to miss strike your putts or you end up leaving a lot of putts short. So one of the biggest faults I see with amateurs when they are putting is they actually end up with the end of the putter, so the grip end of the putter, moving nearly as much as the putter head itself. So we tend to see flared elbows and we tend to see that the end of the grip moves back nearly as much as the putter head, uh, sorry, head itself. What that means is when you're starting to over a 30 foot putt uh, or putting on slower greens, the putter is having to move an incredibly long way back and through. I think it's in this effort to try and create this sort of pendulum action and this nice smooth rhythm, but we end up seeing these incredibly long swings where the putter moves a long way off the floor. When the putter's moving so far back and so far off the floor, it's very hard to strike the ball out of the center of the golf club consistently. If you're not hitting the ball in the same place, you're not getting the same amount of roll, and therefore it's very difficult to judge uh, the distance or get the distance control correct. So we tend to see, as I said, the end of the grip moving almost as far as the putter head end and these very long, slow strokes. There should be some acceleration, actually, as we go through, and the the follow-through length wouldn't be any longer than this, where the arms are extended. What we don't want to start to see is the elbows pulling in towards your hips, the putter coming a long way off the floor. So what I've got for you in a couple of exercises, the first one is I just want you to hold the putter grip with your bottom hand, with your trail hand, so for me, my right. And what I want you to do with your left hand is place your thumb on the end of the grip. And I just want you to get the feeling. I've just put a, um, a tour stick through the end of the grip here. Um, but you could just use a tea peg in the end of the grip. What I want is this stick pointing at my belly button or in front of it, not moving back towards my trail hip. So what I'm going to get you to do is just push down, put a bit of pressure with your lead hand, with your thumb on the end of the grip, and just make a couple of strokes where you actually allow there to be a change in wrist angle in the backswing. So the end of the grip here, the putter uh, head is moving, but the end of the grip actually is staying a little bit more static. So there's a change in angle in the wrist, and then everything's moving through. Our putter starts, or most putters start, with around three and a half degrees of loft on. We actually only need around one degree of dynamic loft by the time we hit it. So we should be de-lofting the putter. And what I see with a lot of amateur golfers is actually that they're adding loft onto the putter. And we tend to get the ball launching a little bit too much, skidding a bit too much. We tend to see backspin before the ball actually starts rolling end over end into pure roll. So if we can get the ball rolling end over end forward roll or into pure roll as we call it, quicker, we get a more consistent roll, we get a more consistent distance and it's easier to judge that. The first time you actually hit putts doing this, if this is a fault of yours, you'll find you end up hitting them too far. And, and that's really just that you've been having to compensate by making an incredibly long swing. So you'll just end up rolling them a little bit further past the hole. But after 10, 15, 20 minutes of practice, I think you'll start to get the distance control back again on the green. So I'm just going to push down with the end of the thumb and make some right hand only putting strokes where I just feel that the stick, the cane in the end of the grip or the tee peg is pointing in front of my belly button and moving towards the target. Then what you can do, again, utilizing this cane in there, is have some practice strokes where you keep that cane, again, pointing ahead of your belly button. It's quite a good visual here that it's actually staying nearer my lead arm, okay, as I make my back swing, and then everything's moving through together. It's not moving this way where the elbows tend to flare out and the putter goes a long way back. I would start off just hitting some short putts, sort of within 10 foot or so, similar to what I've got here. Let's give a couple a go, and hopefully on camera, just with the visual aid of this white cane, you'll be able to see that this stays a little bit closer to my lead arm and it doesn't move so much back towards my right hip. Right, so it's a left half putt this. It's got this gap in here and I'm looking to actually 
move, let that move closer to my lead arm and then maintain that gap on the way through. Let's give it a whirl. A little bit on the firm side. I did say you may hit that. So I started it just outside the left lip, but hit it too hard so it didn't take the break. Let's try one more of those or a couple more of those. That was a better pace. Oh, not moving quite as much. One more. Got to hold this one now. So I'm a little bit straighter at it. Oh, I was just about to say enough. Hold one. Hit the right lip and horseshoe round. So great exercise for you. Start off with the thumb pushing down on the end of the grip, then move into the exercise where you're just trying to get this cane to stay a little bit nearer your lead arm and holding that angle rather than allowing that putter head to move back, or sorry, the grip end to move back as far as the putter head itself. Give those exercises a go. Let me know how you get on. Please check out all our other videos. Uh, content now every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30. And all our social media info you need is coming along the bottom of the screen right now. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.